Okay, I'm Valerie Milano, the senior editor of the Hollywood Times, and I'm so thrilled here to have Tony Pearson um, with his project. And um, Tony, you want to introduce yourself, please? Yes, my name is Tony Pearson, um, professional bodybuilder, and I live in Las Vegas, and I competed for many, many years, and I was discovered by Arnold. Yay. Okay. Just wait till everybody sees your film. They're going to feel the same way as I do. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> wow. The amount of abuse that this guy withstood growing up is both heartbreaking and inspiring. Bravo. This amazing film. Um, it's about an hour and 28 minutes and I wanted more. Um, your father um, and your Aunt Betty were so abusive, both physically and mentally. Not everyone has the inner strength to withstand the kind of abuse you experienced growing up. Where did you find that strength? I don't know. I just always felt that I wanted to stay alive. <laughs> and it was on a day-to-day -day basis. Am I going to live or not? Because she would threaten to you know, you know, kill me every day. You know, she drank a lot and she had these mood swings and I mean, she was unpredictable. So you don't know what's going to happen from day to day. I was afraid to come home every day because I'm going to get a beating for no reason, just for the hell of it. <laughs> it's like a routine, you know, you expect it. And um, I just had an inner feeling that I just wanted to live. I wanted to survive, which is strange. I look back and go, man, you was like, even I'm looking back going, that was tough. I remember when I was 10 years old, I, 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 I. I screamed out to God in, in a loud, why must I live through this? So at 10 years old, I knew something was wrong. And, but there was no escape. You know, I was the youngest and I was, I was a kid. Just I was very, you know, I left my mom when I was two years old. So now I'm three, three years old, eight years old, 10 years old. And you just know there's no escape. I mean, I tried running away many a times. Mm -hmm. And she would always track you down, bring you back and beat you up some more. And, <laughs> just continued on um but you got to be a fighter and i think that was built in i don't know why or where it comes from but i just kept trying to survive from one day to the next mm -hmm. well you know my questions are kind of lengthy so if you can bear with the end of it because i'm i'm explaining a little bit to our viewers a little bit of the movie so the move to St. Louis seems like the break you needed and, and getting moved from your aunt's custody was the blessing you needed. And high school wrestling, you said, you know, you weren't good. So no. why did you get into working out? Initially, it was for physical therapy, uh, rehabbing a knee, right? Yes. Why did you keep going? Yes, I got into sport because, you know, it was really poor in the South, deep South in those days, we lived in a shack and in the back of the backwoods, and there was no money in sports. That was the last thing I was trying to survive. You know, my next meal, I had no idea where I was going to get my next meal. So just by chance, when I moved to St. Louis, which is which a good move because her daughter lived there. So I was walking down the street one day and coming from the park, and I saw this limousine pull up in front of a high school. Ooh, that must be the president. <laughs> I'm just a kid. So I'm running as fast as I could to get to that school. And when the door opened, Muhammad Ali steps out, a great one. He was a champ at the time. So I'm looking up at, at this guy, this giant of a man, blue suit, tailored made, gorgeous. I've never seen a man so pretty. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the moment. That was the moment. And I saw him, I hit him on the shoulder and shook my hand. And he went on into the school to talk to the kids, you know, he did a lot of that type of stuff. So, and but that hit me, I said, I gotta do something, sports. I was pretty good at basketball, but that's at the playground. I wanna go, and my friend said to me, hey, you know, you're very strong, a little kid. Why don't you try out for the wrestling team? And I did, so I made the team. And that's how I got into sports. I was hooked at that point. And, you know, we had to do a lot of rope climbing, you know, wrestling is tough, you know, conditioning for those things and then you're on a diet and you're training you're climbing ropes you're lifting weights you're in a room 120 degrees with a sweatsuit on you got the rest of the top guy on the team so i was strong but i didn't have any experience so those kids been wrestling since they were five years old and in any sport you got to start when you're super young so i'm 
freshman high school. I had no moves, but they said, yeah, man, you're strong. We're going to use it against you. <laughs> but that's how I got into the sports. And I loved wrestling. I really did until I hurt my knee tear one day like a piece of paper. <sighs> so that was the end of wrestling. That was the end of that. So it lasted about a year and a half, two years. And then my wrestling coach, oh, then I had an operation on my knee. And the doctor said, go to a gym and try to rehab your knee yourself. So I go to the weight room every day. I didn't go to lunch. I went to the weight room. And I'm doing leg extensions, leg extensions. And I finally got my legs back. And, and then the other kids came in working out at the gym. And they go, hey, wait, how much can you bench? How much can you squat? How much can you, you know, competition? right away and i responded very quickly to the weights you know i became addicted to the weights that was my escape now so the wrestling coach noticed it and he said hey you want to go to a real gym tonight i go yeah of course you know this is the weight room so he takes me to george turner's gym just by chance what are the chances coming from memphis to st louis to meet the best trainer on the east coast you know this guy had world champions come out of four or five of them before me. And I guess he saw some potential. I went to the gym and I trained for three hours that day. And I was just, it was a brand new gym. And I did every exercise. I trained all the body parts. And, and George was a very intense ex-Marine. So he came over to me and he goes, what the mm -mm are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Get in my office. So I go into his office. I was terrified. You know, I was, you know, I was afraid of everything because, you know, I don't know what's going to happen next. Still that kid, that tortured child. And he says, well, I'm going to train you. Be here tomorrow at 6 o'clock and don't be late. So I show up at the gym. and I'm so excited. I told my friend, I'm going to be, you know, George Turner is going to train me. Did you hear what I say? He's going to train me. So he started training me. He looked, it up, looked me up and down. He goes, we're going to start with those bird legs. So they had no legs. You know, the body is all about genetics, what you have and what you don't have. But structurally... I was blessed with structure, you know, the small waist, hip, broad shoulders, you know, round, full of muscles. But I was weak body parts. I had no chest, no legs, no triceps. So George only had me training legs for nine months, 10 sets of 10, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, to 365 pounds. So at 16 mm. years old, that's what I was doing. But I loved every second of it. It was a great escape for me. And watch your body change drastically, quickly. It was amazing. I was in awe. And then I went to a bodybuilding contest, and the George says, well, you know, back in those days, it was all about weightlifting. It was nothing to do with bodybuilding. They thought it was, you're a freak or something. You're lifting weight, just looking to mirror yourself all the time. And George says, well, I'm going to put on a bodybuilding contest at the end of the weightlifting show, and I want you to be in it. So he goes, hit, hit a pose for me. <laughs> so I double bicep pose. He goes, my grandmother can pose better than that. <laughs> so he's a real character all the way through. Well, that yeah, that's what I was, you know, so funny you must have read my mind because that was my next uh, subject matter was it seems like you got into bodybuilding by accident working with George and you know, working with George was mandatory, kind of, you know, was George a father figure you needed meeting Arnold lit a rocket under your bodybuilding career. The introduction to Joe was pivotal, but what do you see as a pivotal moment that you decided to be the best of the best? Yeah, well, you know, what Joe saw, go this wine rewind it because Arnold said, I've been watching you for months on the beach working out in the 110 degree weather, squatting, blowing, beating your legs up. I'm in his book. He talked about my legs, how they grew, and he went on with Mr. America. So Arnold saw the enthusiasm and the, and the drive that I had. But Joe only saw this skinny kid with, with no muscles standing in front of him, you know, with big afro. And he's probably going, why would Arnold, that's what he said, why would Arnold send this kid out here to disturb me? <laughs> because you know, he's, he had Arnold, he had Frank Zane, he had Lou Ferrigno, he had Robbie Robinson, he had some of the best of the best. And you see them every day. So this kid, who is this? He's nobody, he's nothing. So that's why I think it started out with Joe that way. It just, you know, and, and then once again, I had to prove myself. I was so determined for two reasons. I wanted to survive, you know, I wanted to eat. <laughs> and I know you got to get a title up in your belt before you can make any money. A big title. I won Mr. Los Angeles, I Mr. California, all those things. But you need a real big one. So I won Mr. America within two years, you know, but I pushed myself. And I didn't need someone to tell me. I just knew what I had to do. 
Because mm. I was walking the beach one day and said, God, what do I need to do to become a world champion? You know, automatically I knew you have to do the work. <laughs> Just get to work. So I did. and But Arnold's words really set me off. I mean, it put me in the right frame of mind. I, w- I went to California. Yes, I want to be a bodybuilder. How? I have no idea how to do that. I don't know where to go. You know, there's no help. George is back in St. Louis. I have to do it all by myself. So that's that, yeah, that that's got me going. I mean, Joyce really, I mean, Arn really said, hey, you have a great potential. You're going to be a great champion someday. And that stuck in my head because, you know, in bodybuilding, there's a lot of critics. You're never going to be nothing. You're never going to make it. You're too skinny. They still call me skinny at the gym the other, the other day. Yeah, you're skinny. <laughs> and yeah, so I had a whole career being skinny. So, um, yeah, I won a couple world titles and, but then again, the press, I would get the, the, the magazine. The, there was no internet in those days, just the right. magazine. So every six weeks, you're waiting for the Muslim bill to hit the stand. You get the magazine, you go through. If you're in the magazine, you're doing great. If you're not, you're nobody. So, so sometimes I'm not in a magazine. Or there is an article about me in a magazine that's very brutal. Very brutal. Wow. He has no legs, has no calves. He's <laughs> nobody. He's, he's the worst Mr. America ever. Santa Claus gave him a present, <laughs> stuff like that. When you're 21 years old and you read that about yourself, it's really gut-wrenching. But that just made me even more determined. You know, I take that negative energy, I don't know where I got it from, and just reverse it. It's okay. Sure. Keep my mouth shut and just do the work and show up. And then when you place third, fourth, or fifth, and you think you should have won, you don't say anything, just go back to the drawing board and come back again. So you never go away. I think I spent 20 years in my career and I never went away. And they wanted me to go away. <laughs> well, when you look back on your life in bodybuilding, the celebrities, the competitions, the accolades, how do you look at the life you came from and the life you built in the gym? Bodybuilding taught me who I am, you say in the film. Who are you now, Tony? The positivity is amazing to be so positive after having such a rough life at the start. Yeah, you know, I was very, you know, naive. I didn't know where, I didn't have any friends. I wasn't allowed to have friends. So I was such an introvert when I got to California and very quiet. I I was fortunate to train with some great pros that brought me along. They saw potential as well. But they saw the discipline. They saw this kid, he he's a, he, he wants to work, he wants to do it. So that's helping. Um, I don't know. I It helped me a lot. It helped me come out of my shell. It gave me character. I had no character. I was nobody, even to myself, because I didn't know how to communicate. I didn't, know, I didn't have a conversation. So, but then again, I never thought I was, I won some titles, but I never thought I was good enough, even when I was winning. You know, I go back to drawing boys as well. I got to be better. And the judges, are, well, you need to work this, this, and this. They gave you some clues what you should be working on. So it was never enough. Mm. Never enough. I just said, want to be in the best shape possible. Whatever that is, whatever I need to do, that's what we'll do. And I had great training partners, and I tried to beat them up every single time. And we did. I did a good job. So <laughs> because that was the motivation. Um, I found myself, you know, you know, I... My, for me, being on stage was home. Off stage, I was very shy. And I would hide and cover up all the time. But on stage, I'm full of life. So I kind of missed that part of my life as well because the stage was home. I, I, I love entertaining. Mm-hmm. But I had to practice that too because mm-hmm. you don't just become a great poser, you know, just automatically. George <laughs> made it very clear. <laughs> so there's a lot of homework in the mirror posing, practicing. And I had a few great people in my corner, Kit Keen, who passed away, a good friend of mine. He would come down every week and we're going to go in a pose and we're going to pose for an hour. And then when I was in Canada, this game, Jimmy Caruso, he gave me a three-hour free session on how to pose. Like Frank Zane, here, turn this, 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 this. And you just keep practicing, practicing. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's not just weightlifting. You know, body does is an art form. People say, oh, you guys lift weights. Why do you want to lift weights? No, we're building a body. You're actually sculpting your body. 
So every striation detail shape you see in my body, it was part of my training to look that way. I have a vision before a show exactly how I'm going to look and what it's going to take me to look that way. So that every, even the last show I did, when I was 63 years old, I said, this is what I'm going to look like. I had the trunks on, I was posing, really cut, waist there, arms big. And that was part of it. You got to have the vision what you want and where you want to go. I mean, Arnold said that recently. If you don't know where you want to go, you don't know what you're trying to achieve, you're lost. There's, there's, a, there's, a end, there's a big picture at the end. Uh, and there's a lot of years to get to that, to win those titles. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, they don't come overnight. Mm-hmm. So that was it. I just I just stayed focused and just keep fighting. At the end of the day, you just keep getting back up. Mm-hmm. That's the trick. You know, even now, you know, they write these articles and all the insults you get and they're trying to knock you down. But don't let it bother you. Just get up. Just shake it off. Use that. That is energy. It's negative, but you're going to turn into positive energy. And every rip I did, every set I did, I could hear those voices. I could see the articles. I will, my motto is I will show you. Mm-hmm. I will show you. I will continue to show you. At 63 years old, I will show you. It was drug tested as well. I packed it, you know, no, no drugs. It's all natural. Yeah. But I gave up on myself. The last last show was 63 because my body was not responding like it used to. It wasn't, it was 10 times harder. And I said, I can't do As this. You get older, of course. Right. I go, I, I can't do this. I'm not going to make it. I, this, this, the fat was still there. I, I can't do it. And then by the second day, I look in the mirror and I said, you have never quit before and you're not going to quit now. Right. That got me to the show. So Excellent. That, that's what you got to you got to talk to yourself. People have motivation speaker. I speak to myself. I don't need speakers. I know what I need to do. I know my homework. I know how to do it. I've done it many years. Is it challenging? Yes. If you train 17 weeks twice a day with no carbs, that's tough. Oh, I'd say. Yeah. The last show, that was 17 weeks straight, never missed a day. And the low carbs, high protein. I could The gym had the stairs. I could barely get up the stairs to get to the squat rack because I was so weak. I didn't want you to get on the squat rack. You're okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the mental, you know, your mind controls your body. They keep writing how the body, no, the mind controls your body. When you get to the pain barrier for the last three reps, you can't get them, but mentally you get them. That's mental. Yes, you're in agony. Body don't, it's, it's a tough sport. It's not easy. Everyone be world champion. That was really easy. So you, it's only a strong survive. You got to push, push, push. Like I said, I have some of the best trainers in the world, George Turner and Robbie Robinson, Kent Keen and Bill Grant, some of the best of the best. And I was, I'm grateful. They taught me a lot. I was like a sponge. You tell me once, I got it. And that comes from my childhood too, because when Betty tell you to do something, you better do it. And it better be exact. So that kind of helped me in bodybuilding too. I just tell me once, and I'm very, I, I, I observe. I sit back and watch. I remember I was training with Robbie one day. He, he got 500 pounds on the deadlift. <laughs> and he pulls it up. He gets halfway up. He lost his balance a little bit with it. Then he stepped forward and he locked it. But I was watching his face. And I go, oh, that's when the light came on. I go, it's all mental. Because before you're working out with weights, you're weight training. But I saw his mind. He's so deep. He's won every title there is. And I go, oh, that's what he didn't tell me. I saw it. I said, okay, now I got it. This is a mental game. Don't let the weight beat you. You got to beat it. And every time you go to the gym, are you going to lose or you're going to win? The weight's got to, as you're throwing weights around and jerking weights, you're losing because you're going to injure yourself. Or if you're training super heavy all the time, you're, you're, you're going to hit the wall and you're going to end up quitting. Mm-hmm. So you got to be, you got to outdo the weights. Great advice. That's amazing. That's such great advice. I want to interview uh, Andrew, the 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 uh, director, because I know there's so much story here, and there's this story is so inspiring that it's like it must have been so difficult to direct this story, you know, to pick and choose the things that, you know, that was so powerful to be able to put in. How was it working with him? It was a blast. Wonderful. He's such a smart, smart guy. I just sit back and watch. Once again, I'm observing. So I'm sitting there and they, they're getting the cameras and all these things working. I'm just, 
man, these guys are like geniuses. I'm just like, wow. I'm in awe. And he's, you know, we, we would talk every week, every every couple of weeks, we would talk about what stage is that, where is where we're going with this. And then he would ask me a few questions. And he just really did a great, great job. And it was it blew my mind when I went to see the premiere. You know, I, I know my story, but to see it on the screen and the way he put it together, the way he tied it up like a bow, it's like this guy's a genius. I mean, uh, it was really, I, I, I had my friend with me. She's my manager back in the day. She did all my bookings when I was really competing. She was sitting, thank God she was with me that day because I was I was emotional. I was crying. She's giving me tissue. <laughs> like, Michael J, give me a tissue. When I was just for the first 15 minutes of it, the first 15 minutes, I, I was just, ah. It, it, then well, then I, I, I turned off I, because it's hard to watch yourself on screen because I've never seen nothing like that before. I said, oh, my God. Yeah, but he just really did. There was a lot of footage. He says there's a lot of footage left over. So we had to really be careful yeah. in how to put this together. And we went over it a thousand times. And and I go, brilliant. Fantastic job. It was. It was it's a great film. So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna he, be blasting it out to our readers and our viewers. And we're the Hollywood Times dot today. So I don't know if you've read it yet, but I'm gonna make sure that you do. And um and then our YouTube channel is the Hollywood Times Official. And I just, the, I can't tell you enough how much this film has meant to me personally. And I will just, in, in meeting you today. So thank you so it. much for your precious time. And um, keep keep it up. Thank Bye. you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tony. Have a okay. great rest of your day. You too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.